Hello again, I am Blunty. Now, with the impending release of the Nikon D4 and Nikon D800, I have an ever-growing stack of mail from viewers thinking about upgrading to this higher-end gear, but wondering which one they should get, and what's the difference, and what's better for which one? And actually, even if you're not trying to decide whether you should get a D4 or D800, you're aiming a little bit lower, this video might be of interest to you anyway, because it talks about two different approaches to gear with two different priorities for two different types of photographer for two different types of photography and stuff like that we're thinking about regardless of what your next camera may or may not be. I got to go hands-on with both cameras during my recent trip to Japan at Nikon's office in Tokyo, and I had to play with a bunch of their new compacts too, but I might hit on those in a different video down the line for those folks who are looking for a less fancy and, frankly, less wallet-punishing option. Anyway, so both the D4 and D800 cameras are squarely aimed at pro shooters and the most enthusiastic of enthusiasts. They're both built tough end to end to survive the rigors of the professional life with magnesium alloy construction and frankly if I could own just one of these sort of engineering sample thingies here I'd stick it on the shelf with pride because I think it's just sexy from you know an engineering nerd perspective. Both cameras feature a very pleasant 3.2 inch screen which I'm yet to test outdoors or even so much as near a window but indoors at least it was bright and sharp. Both cameras have built in high dynamic range modes but somehow I suspect most owners will still want to do it manually and edit it on a computer where they have all the control and ability to fiddle and fine tune away. In fact both cameras share a great many features and bells and whistles and really the amount of shared DNA shouldn't be surprising. Significantly, both have an entirely revamped and rebuilt video mode, and Nikon have taken a huge leap forward with this. Quite honestly, before now, if you were shooting video on a Nikon DSLR, you're a bit, well, you're a bit of a numpty, really, because it's not what you'd call their strong suit. But now, from what I saw, I suspect Canon's current dominance of DSLR video shooting is about to end, or at least be significantly eroded. This new breed of Nikons actually surpasses even Canon's unreleased 5D Mark III in a few very important ways, and most notably, uncompromised HDMI output. And I also saw demonstrations of the Nikon D800's in-camera ability to negate the biggest bane of HDSLR shooters, the rolling shutter problem, aka the jello effect. And it was quite remarkable, to tell you the truth, of course, how it performs in the real world in the hands of people who aren't employed by Nikon is yet to be seen, but that wait isn't long now. But the core difference between the two is the sensor. The D4 sports a 16 megapixel sensor and the D800 has 36 megapixels. And it's this difference which causes a trickle down of many other differences and makes each camera more suitable for some types of snapping than the other. The two have differences in their rapid fire modes. The D4 can do 11 frames per second and the D800 just 4. The D4 will take up to 3 times more shots per battery charge than the D800, which if you're in the field is pretty significant. The D4 has noticeably better low light capabilities and lower noise. Meanwhile, the D800 captures a crazy amount of detail. It's about 40% smaller and about 30% lighter and has a built-in flash. The D800 is significantly cheaper too. And the reason for these two different approaches is because they're aimed at photographers with different priorities. For things like shooting sports, for photojournalism, for weddings and action photography, you'll be wanting the D4. Its speed and battery longevity and insane low light abilities will make all the stuff you do faster and easier all the way down your workflow. It'll give you the best chance you've got to nail that once in a lifetime shot. For things where you need extremely high detail and or have much more control over the environment you're shooting in, like studio work, stock photography, portraits, commercial work and landscapes, the D800 will be your best pal. The samples I've seen are eye-boggling to say the least, but the huge megapixel count will slow things down shot to shot and from saving to your memory card and all the way down through your post-processing workflow. Now of course I'm not saying that you can't go out and shoot landscapes with the D4, of course you can, and I'm not saying you can't go shoot a wedding with the D800, of course you can, you can do the old switcheroo as much as you like, but it is a fact that each of these cameras has been designed with specific strengths in mind, so you need to make your own call about which one is going to be better for you and the type of photography that you do in the type of locations that you do them in with the type of gear that you do it with. As for which one's going to give you better video output, well, that remains to be seen. My instinct 
is the D4. There's less scaling and pixel bending and line skipping and all that kind of stuff needed to bring the image down to 1080 with that sensor. Its low light performance will be a big plus for some types of shooting as well. And, well, with that said, Nikon are aiming the D800 at video shooters pretty squarely. As I mentioned before, I was shown sample videos from the D800 and they looked pretty great to me, but we'll have to wait for a head-to-head -head when both cameras are out on the open market to see how it all shakes down for real and how they perform against Canon's gear. It should be noted there are two versions of the D800, and if you plan on using it for video, do not, repeat, do not get the D800 E. It has a modified low pass filter and it will kill you in video because without the normal low pass filter you're going to get some severe artifacts for more ray patterns and more aggressive aliasing jaggies. So beware that letter E if you are a video shooter. Oh, but celebrate it if you're a landscape shooter because you'll get the absolute most crazy high level of resolution and detail possible to squeeze out of that 36 megapixel imaging chip. Anyway, so hopefully it won't be too long before I get to go hands-on with these things properly and go out shooting with each of them in turn and give them each their own proper video review. But for now, thanks for watching. I am Blunty and I will catch you next time.